Now, the next type of gate we're looking at is the antalgic gate. Antalgic gate. Now, guys, see, this is like the good characteristics of antalgic gate. That's how the person is moving. One hip is up. You understand? It's not really Trendy Lemberg, it's kind of different from Trendy Lemberg. Okay, so antalgic gait. So we're going to talk about this gait from the definition. We'll talk about the causes. We'll talk about the characteristics. Yeah, so this antalgic gait. We'll talk about the diagnosis. We'll talk about the possible treatment for this with this antalgic gait. All right. So let's talk about antalgic gait. Antalgic gait is a walking pattern that develops as a way to avoid pain while walking. If you walk normal, you feel pain. So you are now trying to reduce the pain. You are now trying to maneuver your way. You understand? So it is characterized by what a shortened stance phase. All right, so that means what the time spent on one leg is short. Why there's an extended swing phase that's the time spent swinging the other leg forward. Okay, so this okay, that means that on one leg is short, the time is short, on one leg, the time is extended. All right, so this will result into a limp. Okay, as the person actually tries to minimize the time that is spent. Bearing weight on the leg that is spinning them. Do you understand? That's just antalgic gait. Okay. So what are the causes? It could be due to injuries. So things like sprains, fractures, or minor injuries are common causes of what? This antalgic gait. It could be due to what? Joint or bone deformities. So conditions like what? Arthritis, rickets, or malalignment after healing from a fracture. All of that can cause infections. So conditions like what osteomyelitis, which is bone infections, septic arthritis can all cause this, right? Inflammations. Conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, goat, bursitis, all of this can cause neoplasms. So tumors in the lower limb or spine, all of this can cause this. Vascular disorders, conditions like deep vein thrombosis can also cause this antalgic gait. Okay. What are the characteristics of antalgic gait? Limping. Yeah. As the person is walking, it's limping. Okay? They are walking, they are limping. Okay? So there's uneven walking. Okay? So the gait cycle is disrupted, leading to an uneven walking pattern. Of course, the time you are spending on two legs is supposed to be what? Same. Okay? The compensatory lean. So the person may lean towards the painless side just to reduce discomfort. So the person is spending lots of time on the dis on the the side that has no problem. Do you understand? Just to reduce pain. Diagnosis, clinical observation when you watch the patient walk, right? It helps you to identify the limp and access the gait pattern. Medical history. This is when you review the patient's history just to identify potential causes of the pain. Okay. Imaging studies, things like x-rays, MRI, CT scan, all of this can help to identify any structural issues that the patient may be having. Treatment, you address the underlying cause if there's something causing it, okay? So you treat the source of pain, whether it is an injury, infection, or inflammation. Pain management, so use medications like what? Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs just to reduce pain and inflammation. Physical therapy, you can do exercises to improve on strength and flexibility and gait, okay? Assisted devices like crutches, canes, or braces, all of this can help the patient walk, okay? So, I think that's it. So, for conclusion, I'll say that antalgic gait is often what? A temporary condition, especially if it is caused by what? Minor injuries, but it can be a sign of what? A more serious underlying condition issue so actually what handle it with a lot of speed okay